Hello and welcome to the series of class 11 practical session. Today we will do an experiment to find the coefficient of viscosity of a given liquid. I recommend you to check our previous videos for your better understanding. Check our website www.labcafe.com slash blog for the manual of the same experiment. The aim of the experiment is to determine the coefficient of viscosity of a given viscous liquid by measuring terminal velocity of a given spherical body. Apparatus required Viscosity apparatus Steel balls with different diameters Transparent viscous liquid like castor oil or glycerin Screw gauge Thermometer Stopwatch and cotton thread The cohesive force between liquid molecules is the cause of viscosity. When a layer of a liquid moves over another layer with a certain velocity, the molecules of two layers comes in contact and go away from each other. The force of attraction between the molecules oppose this. Hence, tangential forces come into the play between two layers moving with different speeds, opposing the relative motion. Here, we consider two liquid layers P and Q at a distance dz from each other as shown in the figure. Two forces F and F acts between two layers. Once the F tends to speed up the layer P, which is moving lesser velocity, the reaction force F acts on Q to reduce its speed. Hence, F is proportional to A into dV by dz. Therefore, F is equals to eta into A into dV by dz, where eta is the coefficient of viscosity and A is the area of two layers. Stokes law. When a spherical body moves down through an infinite column of highly viscous liquid, it drags the layer of the liquid in contact with it. As a result, the body experiences a retarding force. Then according to Stokes law, the viscous drag force F equals to 6 pi eta rv, where r is the radius of the spherical body, v is the velocity of the spherical body. Now consider the sphere of radius r and density rho falling through a liquid of density sigma. The weight of the body W equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube rho into g. The upward force of 1 c W1 equals to 4 by pi r cube sigma g. Since W is greater than W1, it falls through the liquid with an acceleration. The force of viscosity opposing the motion is F equals to 6 pi eta r v. As the velocity v of the body increases, F increases at one particular level F becomes equal to W minus W1. Then no net force acts on the body and so it has no further acceleration. If it continues moving with the uniform velocity V, this velocity is called terminal velocity. When terminal velocity is reached W minus W1 equals to F, we can say 4 by 3 pi r cube rho minus sigma g equals to 4 pi eta r v. Therefore, eta equals to 2 by 9 r square into rho minus sigma into g by v. Knowing r, rho and sigma and measuring v, eta can be calculated. Before we proceed, let us see how we handle a stopwatch. So this is a stopwatch. It has a start and stop button. It has a split and reset button. It has a mode button. Mode button decides on which mode we want to use it. Start and stop button will help you to start the stopwatch and stop the stopwatch. And split or reset button helps you to split the timer and reset the timer. Let's say a ball is falling from here. We'll pass here and this is the moment we want to start the stopwatch. We want to count until this point and then we also want to count what is the time taken from this point to this point. So we have A, B and C. So to do that, we will start the stopwatch just the moment it reaches here. Then we press split button here and then we press stop button here. So when we press split button, it gives a time on the display. And when we press the stop button, it gives me the total time. So let's do that. For an example, the ball has just reached here and I start the watch and it's falling, 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 falling. The moment it comes here, I split it. 
but it's still falling and the timer is also counting behind so when i stop then i check it it says 14.53 so this means the total time is now 14.53 and this time was 7. Point something so to find this time you have to deduct 7.5 from 14.53 and you will get this time and then once it is done you reset it has become to zero again this is a stokes law apparatus or viscosity apparatus it has a tube acrylic tube having 100 meter of length and we have filled glycerin as the viscous liquid inside it i have tied three different thread on three different scale the first one i placed on 70 second one i have placed on 50 and third one i have placed on 30 centimeters i have left at least 20 centimeter above the first point and i also have left at least 10 centimeters below the last point first we have to take the temperature of the liquid by a thermometer And the temperature is around 20 degree. After that, we have to take the diameter of steel balls. I have taken three steel balls and I measured the diameter using screw gauge. I also have some magnets to use those magnets to get the balls from the bottom to the top. I will use these magnets for future. Now I will take the ball. I'll take the first ball and place it just at the center of the diameter of the tube and then I drop it when the ball comes here I will start the stop clock when it crosses here I will split the time when it cross this line I will stop the stop clock so let's do the first reading I am dropping the ball and I am keeping my stopwatch It's 2.59 and when it crosses it's 6.91 then I will reset the stop clock by pressing reset so it becomes all zero now now I will take the second ball and drop it at the center of the diameter of the tube right at the middle Start, split, stop. So it's 2.46 for this one and the total time is 6.31. Now I'll take the third ball, I'll reset the watch and put the third ball in the center of the tube. Then start split stop so from this point to this point it is 2.65 and then the total time is 5.97 once the experiment is done try to find some magnets like this to collect the balls which are on the bottom of the tube And you can collect the ball like this easily. Observation. The temperature of the experimental liquid, in our case glycerin, is 20 degrees centigrade. The distance between A, B, C, where A, B equals to B, C equals to L equals to 20 centimeter. The density of the steel ball sigma equals to 7.86 gram per centimeter cube. The density of the glycerin at 20 degrees centigrade rho equals to 1.25802 
gram per centimeter cube. The acceleration due to gravity g equals to 980 gram per second square. The least count of the screw gauge is 0.01 millimeter. Check our previous video to see how to calculate the least count of the screw gauge. The mean radius of steel ball is 0.309 centimeter. The mean terminal velocity v is 6.53. So the coefficient of viscosity of glycerin is given by eta equals to 2 by 9 r square into rho minus sigma into g by v equals to 2 by 9 into 0.309 square into 7.8 minus 1.2580 into 980 by 6.53 which is 21.029 second per centimeter square. We can also say poise. Precautions. Liquid should be clear and transparent. The mouth of the tube should be kept closed when experiments are not performed. The steel ball should be fall without touching the side of the tube. The ball should be perfectly spherical and have small radius. So these are the step by step procedure to find the coefficient of viscosity of the given liquid. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like it, please share it with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe our channel. Feel free to comment in the comment section. We will see you in the next video.